Can we pray before we get in the Word? Father, we just come to you. We believe you for words, the bread of life. We believe it's flowing. We open our hearts to receive it. We believe that it it has um, restorative powers, transforming powers. And we, uh, we open ourselves up for you to speak. Lord, I say, speak through me, but also speak to me, Lord, this morning. Do what you always do, and that is speak to every single one of us all at the same time through one word. You have that amazing ability to speak and reach every heart through one message. Do it again, Lord. Do it today. Do it this morning. Encourage us, fortify us, revive us. Oh, stir us up, Lord. I pray by the help of the Holy Ghost in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, I want to start this morning in John 17, verse 4. John 17, uh, verse 4. These are the words of Jesus. He said a lot of great stuff. This is speaking to me. He said, I have glorified you, speaking to his Father, on the earth. How many know whilst we're on the earth, we can glorify the Father too? Well, let's find out how. He said, I have finished the work which you have given me to do. I believe, and as you'll turn into Ephesians chapter 2, I believe there is a work for us all to do. But uh, every one one of us, um, every one of us has something to do. And anyone realize that? You've got a call in your life. You've got a call, John, you realize you've got a call in your life. I've got a call in my life. I've... Uh, Pamela, you've got a call in yours, and and each and every one of us has got a call. We've got something to do. Now, completing what we've been called to do gives God glory, gives the Father the glory. Amen. Now, notice this in verse 10 here. This is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. I'm grateful that I'm created in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Create in, I'm in him, I'm a new creature in him. That's powerful, new in kind, new in quality. Second Corinthians chapter 5, 17 says that. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus, found in him. I'm I'm, I'm in this dispensation of grace. I'm part of the grace, uh, uh, the grace um, race, you could say. Running this faith race. Come on, how many know there is neither male nor female, nor Jew, nor Gentile, nor nor bond or free. We are one in Christ. We are a holy nation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Skin color won't separate us. You know, our background won't separate us. You know, where we we were raised won't separate us. Come on now. Our, our, Our past has gone away. Come on now, has passed away. Behold, the new has come. We identify ourselves in Christ Jesus. We are the grace race. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Running this faith race. So there's things to do. You completing the things that you are called to do gives God glory. Anyone else want to give God glory? Now we give God, God glory. We glorify him through uh, releasing that praise and that, that thanksgiving. We do. But uh, I believe he gets much glory when we release the name of Jesus or when we use our authority. I believe that God continually watches over his son's name, the name of Jesus, to ensure that the son is glorified through your release of the name of Jesus. I believe that. By showing up and manifesting himself uh, and, and uh, taking on the responsibility of what he promised he would do on the back of us releasing our authority in the name of Jesus. Now we glorify him through, through that, but we also glorify him through our song and our worship, but we also glorify him by doing what it, we've been called to do. Now notice this in verse, verse 10. It says, we've been created in Christ Jesus. We're the workmanship of Christ, created in, in Christ, created in Christ Jesus for good works. You were created, made a certain way for something, for works. Not just any old works, but for some good works. The things that you're called to do is some good works. I'm telling you, man, it's some good stuff. It says, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. 
he's prepared it beforehand that we should walk in them. There's, a, there's, a, there's things we ought to do. Jesus said in John 17, as I read and as you saw it in, in your Bibles there, that, uh, that he glorified the Father by doing and completing, by completing the work that he was sent to do. The things that he was sent to do were good. The things that you're sent to do are good. And you give him glory by finishing what he sent you to do. In fact, you were created for it. You were created to do it. And there is a walk, there is a way, there is a work that he prepared beforehand that you should walk in. He didn't say you will. He didn't promise you that, he, that you will. He said you should. You'll be guided to, but not everyone will listen. But you'll be guided to. The Lord has been speaking to us about purpose, and he's been speaking to us about, what else, priorities, and he's been speaking to us about being perseverant, that we ought to be people of purpose. There's a purpose on our life. Are we, are we, uh, are we prioritizing? Our, our, what, what do, are our priorities, our list of priorities, lining up with the purpose? And are we persistent? Are we perseverant? in running our race and sticking to the things that he's called us to stick with. Amen? Amen. Look at Hebrews chapter 12. I'm glad you came this morning. Apparently there's some good stuff that he's called you to do. And he wants you to finish it. He's called us, in fact, to finish it, to run our race. Uh, Man, I've got a race to run. I'm determined to give the Father glory by finishing it. I believe we're going to hit the finish line. You believe that? Come on, we're going to hit that finish line. And uh, we're going to hear those words. Well done. God and faithful servant, steward. Now notice this in the first, first uh, verse here. It says, this is uh, Hebrews chapter 12. It says, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race. Come on now, we are the, the, the grace race. Run in this faith race. He said, run this race. Run it. But you've got to lay aside every weight. You've got to lay aside the sin. The sin. Which so easily ensnares us besets us, different translation says, and or hinders us, and let us run with endurance, endurance, everyone say endurance, the race that is set before us, how? Looking unto our example, looking unto Jesus, our example, looking unto Jesus, the example, uh, the author, the finisher of our faith, the, 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 the alpha, the omega, he's the author, he's the perfecter of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the Father, the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Well, uh, right here, um, in fact, let's read verse 3. It says, For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Now, now, you see a couple of times here in this passage that Jesus had to endure some things. How many of you he had to endure some things? He had to go through some things. Uh, he had to endure um, hostility. Notice, it is possible to get weary in well-doing. Whilst you're doing the good works that he made you to do, it is possible for you to grow weary and faint, it says, in your souls. To, to come, become weary and discouraged in your minds. Now, thinking faith thoughts, speaking faith words, will get your soul um, right out of that defeat and into certain victory every time. Amen. 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 But somebody's got to think faith thoughts. And somebody's got to speak faith words. But when you do think faith thoughts and speak faith words, 
uh, you will definitely be navigated and pulled out right out of that, that uh, defeat into certain victory. But someone's got to speak up. And someone's got to think faith thoughts and speak faith words. Do you speak faith words? Do you think faith thoughts? Amen. I think it's necessary in order for you not to grow weary in your souls or in your minds. There will be some hostility. Has anyone ever experienced any hostility before when you were trying to pursue that thing or trying to do what God has told you to do and, and people were hostile or circumstances seemed like um, were, were hindering you. But how many know we've got to endure and we've got to speak faith words and we've got to think faith thoughts. When you do, you'll pull yourself right out of defeat into certain victory. That's a good word for somebody. I don't know who's going to take that home. But, but, but there is some doing and some intelligent doing required on our part. We ought not be ignorant of the devil's devices. He'll try and discourage your mind, your soul. What are you going to do when you're discouraged in your soul? You're going to speak faith words. You're going to think faith thoughts. And he'll pull you right out of that defeat into certain victory. How many know certain victory is our portion? Amen. Get, uh, we're called to glorify the king. We're called, are we called to worship? We're called to worship. And we worship him, glorify him by doing, finishing what we've been called to do. But apparently you can't do that unless you overcome this weariness of the mind. Weariness of the soul. Amen? Are you hearing what I'm saying here? It says, um, <clears throat> looking unto Jesus... Or, but let's look at the first verse. It says, And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let us run with, does your translation, translation say patience? Patient endurance. Now, the, the Greek uh, translation of this word patience, you ready for this? Is cheerful and hopeful endurance. So if you're enduring, but you're not cheerful, you're not enduring. I'm really enduring this passage of time right now. And it's a struggle, but I, I like Jesus. I'm enduring too. No, no, listen. Your endurance, the type of endurance he's talking about is cheerful. You're enduring cheerfully. How do you do that? Sometimes you've got to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Come on, it's going to take a bit of joy. It's going to take you tapping into the spirit of joy, that well of joy. Come on, draw strength. Come on, how do you draw? How do you draw strength from the well of salvation? It's with joy. Come on, you need strength to endure, don't you? You need strength to complete the assignment on your life. You need the strength of God. How are you going to draw that strength? With joy. Cheerful. Hopeful, endurance. Really, uh, it literally means continuance. Steadfast focus. Everyone say steadfast focus. Yeah. Amen. Winning faith. Winning faith has focused expectations of good. Winning faith. Anyone want to win in their faith? Well, your focus is right. You're expecting, your, your, ex, your expectation is good. You're hopeful. You're hoping the best. You're believing the best. You're, you're knowing on the inside that you are passing through this passage of time. You're walking through it. Amen. Hallelujah. And here's, here's the thing. You, you cannot give thanks thinking on your problems. You cannot give thanks focused on your problems. But, but when you and I, when we refocus on God, when I refocus, redirect my focus on Him, then my thankful, cheerful heart gets to working right, and now my faith begins to abound. When, when my faith is working, operating, and abounding, I'm thinking faith thoughts, and I'm speaking faith words. Oh, glory to God. And without me thinking faith thoughts and speaking faith words, I can't be pulled out of what I'm in into, and be placed into certain victory. So what do I need to do? I must refocus 
my mind, my attention on God and on his promises. When I do that, my cheerful, thankful heart will work right. And now when it's operating right and releasing a genuine praise, now my faith is abounding. Now my faith is working right. Now I've stepped into ever-increasing faith to endure whatever I'm going through. Now this is very simple. I know this is elementary, but I'm telling you, there's some keys here. Think faith thoughts, speak faith words. Refocus your mind on God. Looking unto Jesus. It's all in there. Focused, focused on Him. Praise the Lord. Uh, focused on Him. And uh, when you do, praise the Lord, looking unto Him. Looking unto Him. Studying the example, your example. The example, Jesus. Amen. Looking unto Him. When you refocus your mind on Him. Now. You've got reason to praise. Because I don't know, we're not called to just to praise anything. We're called to praise him. So when your affection and attention is on him, what are you going to do? You're going to praise him. Yeah. Yeah. So when your focus is right, like your focus is off all the stuff you need to do and the stuff you're trying to figure out. You focus, refocus your mind on him. Come on now. Don't become weary in your soul, in your mind. So get your mind in the right place. Set your mind on things above. Look unto him. Focus on him. I know this is so elementary, but I can't get off this. This is for you. This is not my message. This is for you, people. This is just coming out of my heart. When I focus on him, what am I going to do? In his presence, I'm going I'm to worship him. Now, my thanksgiving or my thankful heart is operating right. When my heart is operating in thanksgiving, now my faith is abounding. Now, when I'm abounding in faith, I'm now out of the abundance of my heart. My mouth is speaking faith words. My mind is focused on faith thoughts. And now I'm pulled out of whatever I'm in and placed into certain victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, look, look, look at this a little bit further. You ready for some more here? My, I tell you. Uh, patience. Um, cheerful endurance is what, you gets, is what gets you to the finish line. Um, cheerful endurance is what gets us doing, finishing, and glorifying the Father. Finishing what we're supposed to do. Not finished in the Father, but <laughs> cheerful endurance is what gets us finishing what we're called, made to do. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Should we just practice this for a moment? Should we just get happy? I don't know what this is going to look like. Because hap- not, well, not just happiness, but joy looks different to everybody. But uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Uh, but let's just, should we just get happy just for a moment? Can we get happy? Evie's like. <laughs> Woo! Glory! Glory! Thank you, Jesus. All right, all right, all right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just one moment. One moment, people. All right. True happiness and true joy can only come, true thanks can only come when your affection's on him. Gives you reason. Yes. So people, many people don't redirect their focus looking into him. And so struggle to get happy. Yes. You know, um, my girl, my, all my girls have unique laughs. But especially Avia. She has like a belly laugh. And when she gets laughing, she sounds like sometimes like a, like a, like a man, like an old man or something. <laughs> She was laughing. She was losing it. It was like, you know, there's a difference between a head laugh and a belly laugh. And so she was releasing a belly laugh at the dinner table. And I'll tell you what, I don't know what she was laughing about, but she found it funny. And it was what? Infectious. Infectious. Contagious. Come on now. She started laughing. Emery started laughing. Glory started laughing. Mom and dad started laughing. We all started laughing. Why? Because we were looking at her laughing. We were hearing her laugh. So when we refocus our attention, looking unto God, how many of God's in the he-, he sits in the heavens and he laughs? 
Come on, he's up there and he's laughing and he's having a time and he's getting real happy. Come on, God could take us right into the presence of the Lord where there is fullness of joy. He can take us right from that place of dread and worry and concern and refocus our attention on him. And he said, I'm having a ball up here. You know, you don't even have to know what I'm laughing about. But if you just look into me, come on, when you look at someone laughing, hear someone laughing, you just start to laugh. And it's not, it's, you know, it's not a head laugh. It's a belly laugh. It's a spirit laugh. Come on, someone. So when we look into him, just think about him right now, just for a few moments. Come on, look into Jesus. Come on, before you release, I mean, you're, you may already be there. If you're already there, then release it. But if you look unto him, come on, refocus your attention on him. Looking unto Jesus, come on, the author, the finisher of your faith. Oh, I tell you, woo, come on, right out of your spirit will we'll be joy and happiness. Lord, we praise you. Woo, ah, glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. I tell you what, it is just that simple. It is just that simple. <laughs> Come on now. If, if you're struggling to laugh, look at someone else who's laughing right now. And it'll just start rubbing off on you. Woo! <laughs> Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ha, ha, ha. Glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, we can do this at any time. You've got to focus your attention on Him. You're going to release the thanksgiving. There is a, a, a sustaining that comes when we worship. There's a strength that comes that you couldn't get any other way unless you praised Him. Unless you thanked Him. And I'm telling you what the writer of Hebrews here, he said, come on, there is a cloud of witnesses that not only God is in the grandstand, but those who finished their race, come on, those who finished their race. Come on, Jim's there with his fifth fist like this saying, come on, run. There's people, see, there's, there's, oh, glory to God. Sometimes we win because of who's watching us. He said, looking unto, but you've got to realize something, that he encourages to look to him, but he said, I'm looking to you. I'm looking, I'm watching you, and I'm watching. How are they running this race? Are they running it with patience? Are they running it cheerfully? And see, those who have graduated to heaven are watching with our intercessor, Jesus, too. And he said, look, you, sometimes you win because of who's watching. I remember when Evie would come and watch me play tennis or watch me play football. And I was always uh, just on another level when she was watching. I've said this before, you know, you, you know Wimbledon final is today. And you know, watch, you'll see the crowd going like this. Whenever you watched me playing tennis, she was just, <laughs> as the ball was going back and forth. And I knew her eyes were on me, and because I knew she was winning, I was winning. I knew she, because I knew she was watching, I was winning. It's amazing. Some, some races you win because of who's watching you. And he said, come on, be encouraged. Be strengthened. There is a strength that comes from the cheer. That not only are you encouraged to release a cheerful expression of joy on the back of resetting your focus on Him, but there is a cheer from the grandstands of heaven being released that will encourage you to cheerfully enjoy. I'm telling you, this is just coming right from my heart. I'm prepared like this. I put some little things down, but not quite like this. Our leg of this faith race is vitally important. I don't know if we understand anything about the body of Christ is, is this, that uh, it is a relay race. 
You realize that? That the baton's being passed to each generation to run and take, keep on going. It's a grace race. It's a grace race that we are. A, a race. We're the grace race. Running this faith race. Come on, somebody. woo Come on. Come on now. And faith gets happy. So it's a cheerful race. But it's a relay race. And I got to thinking about a relay race. And if you just consider the, uh, the Jamaican relay and team, I know they won the gold, but they, you know, one of the members, you see. Anyway, they lost the gold medal. But who ran last? Who, Doretta, who ran last? Bolt did. Why? Because he's the, he, he, he's the fastest. See, God doesn't start with the best first. He always saves the best to last. And how many know we are, we are coming right up to the time where we are nearing the end of the church age. You think Abraham was something big and special. You think, you know, come on, you think Joshua was fast. See, God didn't start with the fastest first. He, start, he started with the slowest first. Come on, the generals of old that we get just like in awe about. And we ought to learn. Come on, we ought to take what they, what they did and relay. Come on, we're in the race. We're not, we're not doing their, their lap again. We're, we're running from where they left off. Hallelujah. See, he always saves the fastest to the end. How many know? Come on, the Church of Jesus Christ in 2017... You and me, he chose us for the end because he just, he just knows what's in you. He knows you can run fast. Come on, somebody. He has faith in you to keep on going. Keep on running. Second point I want to make here. The first point was, come on, there's a cloud of witnesses. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. It's going to help us run a cheerful race or endure. <laughs> come on now. Second thing is, lay aside unnecessary baggage. You can't run looking backwards. In fact, in, uh, in high-level uh, you know, races, uh, the coaches will tell you that, that the runners who even glance to their left um, or right, depending on where they are, which lane they're in, they can lose valuable split seconds and balance, and focus, and, uh, and it, could be a matter, it could determine whether or not they win or they lose. See, we can't afford to be looking at someone else's race. We've got to be focused on the race that he's called us, that you should run. It's a race that you, you can't compare. I tell you what, we can't compare. Come on, that's their race. Let them, let, let them run their race. You run your race. Don't lose valuable seconds. It could determine whether or not you win or lose. So this baggage, really, I think one of the biggest things that the enemy uh, trying to keep keeps in our life is something called bitterness. Looking back at what so-and-so did. So I don't know what they might have done to you, but I know what God did for you. And he set you free from that. So many people are holding on to bitterness. Bitterness is you uh, being angry and upset and frustrated about something that happened to you that you believe in your mind. You can't do anything to change that something that happened to you. So what happens is because you're in that kind of mind frame, I can't do anything about it. It wasn't my fault. This was an, an affliction that was afflicted to me out of my control. Uh, I'm better about so-and-so who did this, who were, in, who were a catalyst in, in causing this hurt. And because I feel like I can't escape from it, now this bitterness has, has, has grown roots in my life. It's got into my heart. And the devil will hold you back if there's bitterness in your life. We're holding on to something that you have a right to be set free from. Why are we holding on to something that you've got a right to be liberated from? I tell you what, we ought to be, I'm telling you, looking for ways of forgiving other people because, and, and, and releasing other people. We know many ways from the word of God. Um, why? why? Why ought we be looking for ways to forgive? Because I'll tell you what, the world are looking for ways to hurt you continually. 
And we can't run our race carrying the weights, the cares, the concerns, the betterness is one of the biggest, in my opinion, one of the biggest ones. The, the third point here, and I've got to close with this. He said this, um, uh, lay aside every weight and the sin. Yes, sins, we've got to deal with it. But how many know the blood of Jesus is taking care of the sin problem? Yeah, yeah. Amen. And we've got to lay the sins aside. But notice, the writer of Hebrews said the sin. The sin. What is the sin? The sin is not looking unto Jesus, but looking unto something else. That is the sin. The sin is not looking unto Christ, the author and finisher of your faith. The sin he's talking about is you look into the arm of the flesh. You look into yourself. See, people are beset. Many churches are beset because they're looking unto the law. They, they are hindered. They are beset because they're looking at what they need to do instead of looking at what grace has done. So many people are looking at themselves, at what flesh can do, instead of what Christ in them can do. You hear what I'm saying? Consider Jesus. Consider him. Consider the spirit man who's on the inside of you. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Hallelujah. Now, if we look unto him, we're going to be found praising him. Because when we look at him, man, we're going to be in awe. He's going to be laughing, falling off his chair, off his throne. And we're going to be laughing with him. Contagious. It's going to give us such strength to keep on going. See, lay aside the sin. Don't look to the flesh. You can't do nothing. You know nothing within yourself. You have nothing. Can do nothing. So why would you look at you anyway? You can't do it. But Christ in you, look to the Christ in you. Looking unto Jesus. When you look unto him, You've laid aside the sin he talked about. When you lay aside the bitterness and look, at, look for ways to love other people, come on, be compassionate to other people. Oh, glory to God. When you do that, I'll tell you what, you'll be liberated from that baggage. You can't run your race with that baggage. Quit looking at other people's race. Look at yours. And take great encouragement on the back of the grandstands are filled with people cheering you on so you can cheerfully run on and run your race. And in the process, hit that front finish line and give the Father glory. Having been created for good works and having completed those good works in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for every soul here, every life here, every family here, that the call and the purpose upon our life, that Lord, we're able to do it, complete it, because of the Christ on the inside of us. Thank you, Lord, every time when we set our affection on you, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Oh, Lord, we, we, we have reason to, to, to praise. Looking to you and your majesty and your glory. Oh, Lord, even just now. Come on, with everyone stood up, let's do this. Father, we just thank you for your mercy and your grace. Man, you are so wonderful. Your design is so powerful, so, so perfect. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, we choose today, we determine to be people who quit looking at what's not right. We refocus. We look to you. Hallelujah. We will speak faith words and think faith thoughts. By the help of the Holy Ghost, we're pulled right out of defeat into certain victory. Woo, we believe it. We believe it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You're going to run your race, Chris, Kenny. You're going to run your race. Michael, you're going to run your race. And Tanya. Tony and Doretta, you're going to run your race. Jenny and Darren, you're going to run your race. Sylvia, you're going to run your race. And Tanya, Colin, John, you're going to run your race. Anne, you're going to run your race. Michael and Rosie, you're going to run your race. Sir, Lloyd, Lord, David, Lord, you're going to run your race, brother. You're going to run it. You're going to, you're going to finish, finish it. Come on, Abby. Thank you, Lord. Evie wrote this yesterday, it came right off her heart. She said, give your faith a voice. Be thankful and full of praise. In pray, praise, your situation will transform. So yes, rejoice even in the storm. It is not the trial we joy in, but the hope we have in Him.
So lift your voice and fix your gaze. Behold, your victory in Christ is always. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. She could probably read it better than I, I, I did, but I'll tell you what. Ah, oh, victory in Christ is always. So we give, that gives us reason to rejoice all.